Hey everyone, and welcome to The Explainer. Today, we're gonna look at math in a totally new way. Forget just sets of problems for a minute and think of it like a language, one that has its own grammar, its own nouns, and its own sentences. First things first, let's learn the alphabet. And hey, a huge shout out and a very special welcome to all the students watching from Romblone State University's San Fernando campus. We actually made this explainer just for you guys to help with your course, and we are so glad you're here with us. All right, let me ask you something. Do you ever feel like you're learning a completely foreign language in your math class? Well, guess what? You're not wrong. Math really does have its own vocabulary and grammar, and once you start to see it that way, it all starts to click. So how do we start? Well, just like any language, the language of math is built from some pretty basic parts. You can literally think of them as the parts of speech. Before we can build sentences, we've got to know our words. And what's so cool is how perfectly these math parts map onto English grammar. Think about it. Numbers, you know, like zero, two, or three, they're basically the nouns of math. They're the objects we're talking about. Then you've got your operation symbols, plus, minus, multiply, divide. Those are like connectives, kind of like the word and. The real action comes from the relation symbols, like the equal sign or the greater than sign. These are the verbs. They show a relationship. Grouping symbols, like parentheses, just tell us what ideas belong together. And finally, you've got variables, your X, Y, and Z. Those are just the pronouns, standing in for a number we don't know yet. Okay, so keeping those parts of speech in mind, let's zoom in on our first major concept, the mathematical expression. The easiest way to think about this it's the math equivalent of a noun or a simple phrase. It's just a piece of an idea. So here's the official definition. In expression is just a correct arrangement of math symbols that stands for a single thing, a single object. And that word, object, is super important. An expression gives a name to something, but it doesn't actually say anything about it. So here's the deal. An expression is just a phrase. It represents one single value. It's not telling you a whole story, you know? It doesn't state a complete thought. And this is the most important part. You can't ask if an expression like five plus two is true or false. It just is. It's the number seven, that's it. And this idea applies to all kinds of expressions. Let's look at a few. You see three X plus seven, that's an algebraic expression. It represents a number. But which number? We don't know until we know what our pronoun, x, is. Now this next one, a squared minus b squared over a plus b looks kind of scary, right? But it's still just one single value. It's a rational expression. Same thing for the square root of 81. It's just a different name for the number nine. See, none of these are making a claim. They're just naming a mathematical thing. Okay, so what happens when we take these phrases, these expressions, and use them to say something to make a complete statement? That's when things get really interesting. We start building sentences. And that, my friends, brings us to the mathematical sentence. Just like in English class, a sentence in math is a correct arrangement of symbols that actually states a complete thought. It's making a claim. And check out this comparison. It makes it so clear. In English, we say, the sky is blue. That's a complete thought, it's making a claim. In math, three plus five equals eight, does the exact same thing. It takes two expressions, three plus five and eight, and connects them with a verb, the equal sign, to make a full statement. And this right here, this is the absolute game changer. The number one difference between an expression and a sentence, truth value. Because a sentence makes a claim, we can now ask that question we couldn't ask before. Is it true? Is it false? Or maybe, does it depend? Let's break this down with some real examples. Take the sentence seven plus five equals 12. We call that a closed sentence because there are no variables, no mystery. And it's truth value, well, it's true. Easy peasy. Now look at nine minus three greater than 10. This is also a closed sentence, but this time it's false, right? Six is definitely not greater than 10. Now things get interesting. X plus four equals nine. This is an open sentence. Why? Because its truth totally depends on what X is. It's only true if X is five. Same idea for two Y minus seven is less than or equal to 13. 
That's another open sentence, and it's true, but only for certain values of y. All right, we've looked at the parts, we've looked at the complete thoughts. Now for the main event, let's put them head to head in a final showdown to really lock this concept in. Here it is in a nutshell. An expression, that's your building block. It's like a noun or a phrase, and it has absolutely no truth value. A sentence, that's the whole statement, a complete thought, and it always has a truth value. It's gotta be either true, false, or its truth depends on a variable. And you want a super simple shortcut? Here you go. The second you see a verb, like an equal sign, or a greater than or less than sign, it's a sentence. It has to be, because it's making a comparison or a claim. It's not just a phrase anymore. So from now on, here is your final test. Anytime you're looking at some math and you're not sure what it is, just ask yourself this one question. Can I ask if this is true or false? If the answer is yes, you've got yourself a sentence. If the answer is no, it's just an expression. It's really that simple. So if you remember just one thing from all of this, let it be this. Expressions are phrases, sentences make claims. That's the core of it. And hey, to all our amazing viewers again from Romblon State University, we really hope this helped clear things up. You can count on us. We're gonna be back with more explainers just like this all semester to help you nail your course. So you're gonna wanna stay tuned. So I'll leave you with this little puzzle to think about. From figuring out if you have enough money for lunch to checking if you have enough time to get to your next class, what's one mathematical sentence that you use every single day, probably without even realizing it's math? Something to think about. Thanks for watching.